Hi, this is Phil Chandler. A couple of days ago, I had a phone call saying that somebody had a swarm that had moved into a nest box. Uh, my first uh, instinct when people say that is that it's probably the uh, tree bumblebee, um, Bombus, uh, what's it called, Hypnorum, which is quite common in this area of South Devon and absolutely adores uh, nest boxes. And so I assumed that it was going to be a, you know, a, a, a non-event, a waste of time. Uh, but then the chap phoned me again and, and sent me a photograph. Um, and the photograph showed quite clearly that comb was being built outside the entrance to this nest box. And so that piques my interest, of course. And so this is what we ended up with. And this here is the nest box. I um, decided that the only way of solving this problem was to actually take the nest box off the tree and bring it back. But of course, um, it, although it was quite a small swarm, uh, the, there is not going to be much room in that nest box, even though it's uh, you know reasonably large one. So they're going to run out of room quite quickly. Luckily, in my workshop, I had a box, which is this one underneath, which I built years ago for half dadent frames, which were left over from Brother Adam's day at uh, Buckfast Abbey. And I, I made several different boxes to contain half dadent frames, and this is one of them. It just so happens that it's almost exactly the same uh, footprint as the nest box. So w what I've done here is simply, um, when I say simply, it wasn't entirely simple getting it off the tree, but nevertheless, what I did was um, uh, I took the nest box down um, and, and covered it immediately. Then I took this box back up the tree to pick up the foraging bees, uh, which it reasonably did a you know, reasonably good job of. Uh, left it up there for half an hour to collect the uh, the flying bees. There are frames and comb inside, so that, you know it, it smelt kind of like a like a beehive, even if it didn't smell like their own beehive. So anyway, um, I brought both of these boxes back here, put the uh, nest box on top of the half daden box, and so they've now got a two-story mini hive, which will keep them busy for a while. I don't know uh, how long they're going to be staying here, but. Uh, they they seem quite happy there. They're foraging. They're coming and going and as you can see there is a little bit of comb um, That they've built outside the entrance, but hopefully if they haven't already they will start using the frames down below Sooner or later and expand downwards into that. So there we go um, The moral of this story is uh, well, what should we say? Don't make assumptions without evidence is one um, and another one is don't throw anything away, <laughs> which is my why, my, why my workshop is absolutely full of things like this uh, that I may never get to use. But when they are needed, uh, at least they're there and ready to be used. So there you go, as justification for having a messy workshop. And uh, the, other, the other lesson, I suppose, is to, uh, is to think... Um, I was going to say outside the box, but of course <laughs> that would be a bit ironic, wouldn't it? Um, think a bit laterally, if you like, about uh, these problems. What I've done here actually is to take the floor out of the nest box so that they can expand downwards. I probably should have mentioned that uh, if it wasn't obvious. I took the floor off. I had to also had to saw a, uh, a piece of wood off the back of the nest, nest box so that it sits squarely. In fact, I'll show you that. You can see I've just screwed, roughly screwed a piece on the back there just to hold them together for now, the time being. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the story of this little hive, and um, obviously they're not going to stay in there forever, but uh, it's a temporary measure to keep them happy for a while. There you go, that's it for now.